Hey guys, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. Today we are going to be making some homemade dog food. This is something that I have not talked about before on my channel, not a whole lot anyway, and uh, it's something that I do every once in a while. Full disclaimer though, right off the bat, I am not a canine nutritionist, I am not an expert, I am well educated in NRC standards for dogs, um, balancing meals, um, all of that. But I'm not a certified canine nutritionist, so always, always take with a grain of salt any information that I'm giving or anybody else online is giving if they are not certified. Um, so, but with that, um, I do know my own dogs. I know what is good for them, and I have been doing this for a little while now, and so I am pretty confident in my abilities to make dog food for my dogs. I have a German Shepherd mix here named Aria, and if you watch my channel at all, you've probably seen her on videos before. She is the cutest. I love her with all of my heart. But she's also extremely sensitive, as many German Shepherds are known to be, unfortunately. And because of that issue with Aria, we don't actually raw feed necessarily. Every once in a while we will, but for the most part, all of our recipes are cooked recipes with added supplements to balance out things like calcium and things like that. The thing about Ari is that she can digest bones every once in a while, but most of the time she throws them back up. Her stomach just doesn't really do very well with bones. Now Ronan, my Amstaff mix, is very good about digesting bones. He, I mean, he could eat raw if I let him, but because Aria doesn't, because Aria gets the special treatment and she gets cooked meals, so does Ronan, because we bulk prep and I'm not about to do two different styles of bulk prepping. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. I like to talk about rabbits here <laughs> a lot. So I am mainly a homestead channel and a lot of the times we talk about rabbits for meat. Now many times it's meat for my husband and I, so I mean we cook rabbit pretty much every single way that you can cook chicken. It's basically the same uh, cooking style. Rabbit is basically a very lean meat, much like chicken breast. So honestly, it's really great. I mean, we eat it all the time. And a little known fact that you might not know about me is that when I got back into rabbits in 2019, it was actually to feed my dogs. That was their primary purpose when we very first got back into them. Ari was going through a lot of health problems and that was my own fault, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. But that is one of the main reasons that we got into rabbits. Rabbit is considered a novel protein, so it's actually really good for dogs with sensitive issues, sensitive GI tracts. It's highly digestible, it's very lean, it's got a very great nutrient profile. It's, it's a really great meat for any dog or any human to consume. It's very digestible, it's very good. It's been great for Aria to eat rabbit, especially in the cooked form, so it's just been great. So in 2018, I got into the trend of raw feeding. I will fully admit that I thought it was trendy. I wanted to do it for my dogs. I thought it looked cool. I just jumped into it not knowing a thing about canine nutrition. And that was a very, very bad thing to do. Because I saw that it was trendy, I didn't really research a whole lot. I mean, I researched a little bit, but for the most part, I was just like, well, my dogs, they're like wolves. They can eat anything. So when I got into raw feeding, I really didn't know a whole lot about it. And unfortunately, that was detrimental for Aria here, and she consumed uh, some bones and things that she just could not digest, and she went through months and months and months of health problems following that. Um, we never really figured out what had happened to her, but after a little over a thousand dollars at the vet, we just kind of assume that she had an intestinal puncture caused by a bone. And after that, she went through a period where she was very sensitive to many different types of protein. And so it took a really long time for us to land on how to feed her properly. And one of the things that we actually did that ended up helping her was actually getting an allergy test done for her, which I know those are very hit and miss. Um, a lot of vets completely dismiss them. In our case, it actually worked well. So I'm not about to completely dismiss them, but I do think that they should be taken with a grain of salt, like most things, but 
Um, we tried so many things for Aria. That was just the one thing that really kind of helped us and pushed us in the right direction. We learned from that test what proteins to avoid and then we moved on from there. A lot of the times when a dog has a sensitivity like that, it's not necessarily an allergy. A lot of people say, well, my dog is allergic to chicken or my dog is allergic to beef. It's not necessarily that they're allergic to it, it's just that they've developed a sensitivity to it and their body starts to reject it. If your dog eats the same protein throughout their entire life, they're eventually going to start to develop a sensitivity to it, as weird as that sounds. So it's really important to kind of rotate proteins or um, make sure that you are providing a variety of different things. I'm not here to give advice on how to raw feed necessarily because my recipe here, it doesn't require bones. There are no bones in it. We use a calcium carbonate supplement. So um, I'm not gonna give you advice on how to raw feed your dog. If you want to feed your dog bones, do your research. They're not bad for dogs, but you just need to make sure that you're choosing bones that are safe for them and that also you know for a fact that your dog can handle them. Aria can't, Ronan can. <laughs> Every once in a while Ronan gets something that Ari can't have, but for the most part, yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting ready to give advice on that. Um, also, I'm not getting ready to give advice on giving your dog raw meat. My dogs can eat raw meat if they want to, but for the most part, they actually prefer it to be cooked. So yeah, my dogs are a little bit extra. <laughs> they, um, they get an egg cooked for them every morning, scrambled. So yes, they are a bit extra. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> if you are laughing at me, it's okay. I laugh at myself too. I don't know. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> so anyway, we are going to talk about what all goes into our meal prep for our dogs. Like I said before, this is not something that I do all the time. It's something that I do when we have um, a whole bunch of leftover rabbit. Most of the rabbit that they are eating here is either a large cull rabbit that we didn't want to eat ourselves because when they get really big like that, they get a little bit older and tougher. We don't really want to eat that. Dogs have no problem with it. Either that or it's a rabbit that when we were butchering, we messed something up um, accidentally, maybe botched like the leg or something and then it wasn't pretty and so we didn't want to eat it. <laughs> Which sounds really dumb, but honestly, it's fine because it all ends up as dog food if we don't eat it. But yeah, as we butcher, sure if we mess one up or if it's an older one. I just bring it in, we might freeze it, but for the most part I usually just throw it in the instant pot and let it cook down. Makes bone broth for us to consume as well as the dogs and then the meat that is left over after making bone broth is put in the freezer for whenever we have enough saved up to make dog food. So that's kind of how we do things and yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna get into it and we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the different things that I'm using and why and also how I kind of do them. So let's get to that. So I wanted to make this video outside you guys, but the flies kind of like this food as well. But this is a whole bunch of shredded cooked rabbit that uh, is still, that one's still thawing. <laughs> Most of it's still kind of thawing, but um, it's shredded, cooked, ready to go. And that's just kind of how we do it. We have this bin here, and we're gonna be throwing everything in the bin and then mixing by hand, which is really fun. It's just all nicely cooked rabbit uh, right out of the Instant Pot and then frozen. We continue freezing rabbit until we have enough to do a bulk prep like this. Rabbit is very easy on digestion, like I said, and it's also very high in vitamins B12 and E. It's a low sodium meat, which is really great for dogs. No salt added in this recipe. And it's also higher in calcium than chicken, so don't have to add as much calcium as we would if we were using chicken in this recipe. One of the best proteins that goes really well with rabbit, because rabbit is so lean, is pork. Pork is a fattier meat, and so it kind of balances with rabbit really well. And this is pork that I got at Kroger. I wish that it was our own pork, because that would be really cool, but also that would be really expensive. <laughs> but I just get pork loin at Kroger. I waited until it was on sale for $1.49 a pound. and just threw these bad boys in the Instant Pot until it was shreddable. I had to roast some of them because some of it was not cooked when it came out, which is fine. It doesn't matter to the dogs if it's slightly undercooked, but I did throw it in the oven, and so now it's got that a nice roasted look to it, and I'm sure Ari's gonna really appreciate that. <laughs> Pork is also high in thiamine, which is a B vitamin, as well as phosphorus and selenium. 
Another thing that we have going here is this beef liver here. Lovely, lovely beef liver. And it is lightly cooked. All I did was I threw it in our Ninja, kind of blended it up in a puree, and then uh, I cooked it like I would hamburger meat. So that's why it doesn't look too grody. Uh, but it's kind of the texture of ground beef when you do that. And that's how I like to do it because Ari really hates raw liver. She doesn't like that at all. It's got a lot of vitamin A in it and you can overdo it and make your dog sick if you give them too much of it. So a little goes a long way. I think for this 20 day bulk prep, this was only, it was a little less than a pound. I think it was like 11 ounces or something like that. And that is just plenty. Beef liver is a great source of copper, vitamin A and iron. Eggs are something that we are going to be cooking up every day, like normal for them. Yes, my dogs are spoiled. Please don't make fun of me too much. <laughs> but we are going to be giving them an egg every day, just like normal. Even when they just get dog food, they still get an egg every day. Eggs are a great source of choline, which is really good for heart health. And also they benefit dogs by giving them a source of good cholesterol as well as vitamin D. Here's something that some people find controversial, but I like to include grain in my dog food. So brown rice is a whole grain and it provides a really great source of fiber for dogs. It's, it's also a really, I mean, it's, it's full of nutrients and when you cook it a little bit mushier than usual, it's a little bit more bioavailable for them. I really like including rice because it bulks up their stools a little bit better. Another thing that we are adding is calcium carbonate. For obvious reasons, guys, there are no bones in my recipe, and so we have to add calcium in it to balance out that. We are also adding organic kelp powder. Now, a little of this goes a really long way as well. There's not a whole lot in this recipe, but this provides iodine, which is not found in basically any of this food here, and that, that is a supplement that needs to be given. So that's why we use kelp for that. And also we are going to be adding fish oil. This is not my brand of choice, but we were out of the kind that I really liked. So I just went to the pet store and I got this today. But usually what I would recommend is the Nordic Naturals brand. That's a really good brand to use, but this one will do in a pinch as well. This is for healthy skin and coat. You also get those omega fatty acids, which is really, really great for a whole host of things. But, um, it's just a really good supplement to have, and it also freezes well too, so we're gonna add that in there as well. Zinc's really good for the immune system, and you also need to worry about balancing out your copper levels with zinc. You always want a little bit higher of a level of zinc than copper in your dog's diet. This is also the Now brand, just in case you were wondering, but it is zinc picolinate. My camera started wigging out on me before I could explain to you guys why I also use kale in this recipe. So we're gonna talk about it now. So dogs don't need veggies, but that's not to say they don't provide additional benefits when they're added in. Kale has a high nutrient profile and a whole host of benefits. And since I have an abundance of fresh kale out in my garden, why not? To prepare the kale, all I did was chop it up and then lightly steam it and then zip it through my blender. And another thing that my camera forgot to pick up for some reason was explaining the pumpkin puree. Pumpkin puree is really good for regularity and when it is pureed, it is highly bioavailable and offers many additional vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. Pumpkin puree is also really important for my recipe because it's the catalyst for dispersing the different supplements that I put in the food. It helps to spread those out evenly within the whole mixture. are gonna have to excuse my hair and how sweaty I look. It has been a day, let me tell you. <laughs> Two more things that we have to add to this recipe though. Vitamin D is one that we add, but also don't overdo it on that one because you, you can't overdo it. And another thing that we need to add is vitamin E. And I think that with the certain one that I have, I add four drops of vitamin E. If you guys are interested in knowing how to balance out recipes, I would encourage you to join the Facebook group. The one that I joined was called Raw Fed and Nerdy. It seems extremely overwhelming at first, 
but honestly after being in it for about a year it started to click with me on how to do this also one of the things that I used that really helped me in learning how to balance myself is something that was called PDD or pet diet designer PDD is really good at uh, helping you understand the different values of different nutrients and understanding what needs balance and one of the best ways that I learned how to balance my own meals is using PDD and then taking screenshots of the recipes that I was creating and then sharing them to the Facebook group. And then they would tell me, you know, what I'm missing or how to fix something or, you know, how to improve something basically. So that's kind of how I learned. It's been a really great tool. I think I'm gonna put some blueberries in here as well, probably some frozen blueberries. Um, again, not necessary, but blueberries are really high in manganese and a couple of other things. With that, we are going to mix this all together in the bin. Take your rings off when you do this part because you will get all sorts of crap stuck in your rings and you do not want that. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna mix this together. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video of me making dog food. Um, I wanted to film an outro outside, but I can't do that because there's a generator running outside. We lost power at 11 p.m. last night and it hasn't come back on yet and it's 2.30 the next day and we got a notification from our electrical company that it might not be back for like two to three more days. I'm gonna go ahead and put this recipe that I used for this dog food down in the, the description down below. Um, just be careful if you're gonna remake this with the supplements because every dog is different. Your dog might require more or less of the supplements. So uh, again, like I said, Raw Fed and Nerdy, the Facebook group, and also PDD, Pet Diet Designer, has been extremely helpful. So anyway. If you've never made dog food before, I hope that maybe it inspired you to try it out because it is actually a really cool thing to do. The dogs love it and it's fun to make. I think it's fun to make. So with that, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.